Archaea comes under the class Reptilia and order Squamata. Ophidia includes snakes. So what are the characteristic features of snakes? They have got an elongated body and their most important characteristic is the absence of limbs. Whereas there are certain exceptions that is pythons, boas etc are having rudimentary hind limbs. So here you can see the rudimentary hind limbs of a python. So this is one and this is the other. So these two rudimentary hind limbs can be seen and they are called as spurs. But in most of the snakes limbs are totally absent. Second is the absence of external ear openings and they even lack a tympanum or ear drum which is and feature is that the eyes lack eyelids so they cannot open their eyes because since they are lidless but instead the eyes are covered with a transparent watch glass like covering which is called as brill and that gives the starey look of snakes and since uh, lids are absent they cannot close their eyes like lizards the tongue is elongated in snakes and we can say, see that their ends are bifid or forked and not only that uh, these tongue this protruded tongue which you can see here can also be retracted back into their buccal cavity and can be enclosed within a sheath inside the buccal cavity so they can be protected inside the sheath when not in use or they can project out uh, it is usually used for sensing temperature changes etc the urinary bladder is absent in snakes since the urine is semi solid in nature it's not watery it is semi -so solid so there is no storage of uh, urine and so urinary bladder will be absent and they show uricotelic excretion where uric acid is the principal nitrogenous excretory waste product most of the snakes show pleurodont teeth that means the teeth are ankylosed or attached to the inner edge of the jaw bone and the teeth are numerous sharp they are small and recurved you can see the teeth are uh, recurved in nature recurved teeth another important feature is that the skull bones of snakes are movably articulated the joints between skull is movable unlike mammals we have immovable skull bones which are sutured to each other whereas in snakes the skull bones are movably articulated and this allows maximum wide gape of the mouth and another important thing is that uh, when we have two lower jaw bones and they are fused at the front in snakes the two halves of the lower jaw are not fused with each other at the front region so they can move their lower jaw they can move the right and left half of their lower jaw independent of each other to either side so all this permits larger gape of the mouth and they can uh, swallow a prey which is many times larger than the size of their head this is because of the flexibility of the jaws and since they uh, lack limbs the forelimb bones are absent then the cranium is closed in front it is also seen in mammals that is the there are certain skull bones present on the roof of the skull which are formed from membrane so they are called dermal skull bones they are integrated with the cranium and so the cranium is closed in front this is a feature which is found in snakes only in the case of reptilia another striking feature is that the in snakes the external ear is absent the tympanum is also absent but this is present in other reptiles tympanum is the ear drum instead they have got a columella oris which is a bone that is part of the middle ear cavity and an inner ear and their inner ears are uh, directly connected to their jaw bones and these jaw bones are rested against the ground because they are crawling forms so the jaw bones rest against the ground and it is to these jaw bones that the inner ears are connected 
So suppose some animal walks nearby the snake, the footsteps of that animal will start producing certain vibrations and these vibrations on the ground they will cause the snake's jaw to vibrate in response because the jaw bones usually rest against the ground and so vibrations on the ground will produce vibrations on their jaw bones and uh, this will be sent to the inner ear and the inner ear will send signals to the brain and the brain interprets these signals and identifies the source of sound. So finally the snakes they do not hear through their ears they will hear only through the skull bone and they can sense only vibrations on the ground. Another feature is they are pulmonary that means they respire through their lungs but here in snakes only the right lung is well developed. The right lung is only well developed and it is also elongated whereas the left lung is much reduced. So they have only uh, large they have got a functional right lung which is longer. They enjoy cosmopolitan distribution in all parts of the world but we will go to certain region like Ireland where snakes are totally absent, New Zealand snakes are totally absent and in Madagascar highly poisonous snakes are absent. Now the body of snakes is covered by horny epidermal scales just like any other reptile the scales are born from the epidermis and the snakes show a phenomenon which is called as molting or ecdysis which is the periodic casting off or shedding off of their skin and it is renewed by new skin. So a new scaly epidermis is renewed and the old skin is cast off. So why it happens? So this is a mechanism to get rid of, uh, this is an immune mechanism to, to get rid of unhealthy worn out skin to remove the parasites attached to their old skin. In mammals or in humans we can take the example, uh, this skin shedding is even present in us but it does not take place all, t it does not take place in a single stretch, it occurs daily. In every minute there we are losing uh, cells from the skin and they are replaced by uh, new cells which are uh, arising from the uh, germinative layer of the skin. But in snakes uh, this process is not independent, it takes place together as a single unit and that is how they shed their skin only periodically. So for shedding their skin they have to first make a rip or they have to make a first make a cut in the old skin uh, then only uh, they can get rid of the old skin and for making this rip or cut in the skin they usually uh, rub their body against a rough hard object such as a rock or a log etc. So this phenomenon is called as molting and uh, you uh, this is not shown by uh, individuals who are dormant because this phenomenon is seen at the end of dormancy, dormancy is a state of inactivity. So as it was mentioned earlier the replacement of skin cells it is not independently taking place but it grow, the cells grow on the same cycle and they will add, they will cohere, they will fuse with each other to form a complete unit and this is later shed off. Now coming to their development, snakes may be oviparous, 70 percentage of the snakes are oviparous that is they are egg laying forms. The examples are rat snakes, king snakes, grass snakes, mambas, cobras, adders, all are oviparous that is the female uh, lays eggs and uh, the eggs are either taken care of or not and young ones hatch out from these eggs and the eggs are shelled whereas 30 percentage of snakes give birth to young ones. The examples are rattlesnakes, vipers, boas, 
and most of the sea snake species. And in those snakes which give birth to live young ones, there will be two kinds of mechanisms operating. One is called viviparity and the other is called ovoviviparity. So what is the difference? In viviparous snakes, the young ones or the embryos, they grow inside the female body and they are deriving nourishment or nutrients through a placenta and a yolk sac. So these young ones who are growing inside the mother's body are both physically connected as well as physiologically connected to the mother's body. And in this type of method, there will be no egg laying. There will be no egg present at all. So this is literally, it is the same phenomenon like which we mammals give birth to the young ones. So that is called as viviparity and that is very rarely seen in snakes except in case of uh, boa constrictor which is a non-poisonous snake and green anaconda which is again a non-poisonous snake. Here you can see true viviparity whereas all the others who give birth to young ones are ovoviviparous. In ovoviviparity the female will not lay eggs but instead she will retain the eggs inside her body and the young ones grow inside these eggs which are already retained in the female's body and the eggs will hatch out inside the female and thereafter the baby snakes which have hatched out from the eggs they will come out of the female body. So when they come out of the female body they will be having no eggshell or no traces of eggshell. The hatchlings are born alive and they are out of their eggs. The examples are rattlesnakes species, vipers etc. That is they give birth to young ones after retaining the eggs inside their body and after the eggs hatch out. So that is the difference among oviparity, viviparity and ovoviviparity. Oviparity is egg laying. Viviparity and ovoparity are giving birth to young ones in which in viviparity it is true birth that is the young one retains both physical and physiological connection with the mother's body. In ovoviviparity the young ones have only physical connection with the mother's body that means the eggs are retained inside the female body so they are physically inside the mother's body but they derive nutrition from the egg. So they have only physical connection not physiological connection and the eggs hatch out inside the female body and thereafter the young ones come out. So these are the different types of development which we can see in snakes. Now going to some examples. When we take the largest snake it is Eunectus neurinus which is called as the South American anaconda. If we go to the small snakes they include the thread snakes which come under the family Lepto, Diplopidae, the blind worm snakes which come under the family Anomaly Pipididae. Then you can see the non-venomous snake Dias or rat snake Chera in Malayalam. Then Tiflops or blind snake Kuridipamba in Malayalam. Naja cobra, this is Daboya, it's a kind of viper, Bangaris or crate, poisonous snake, it's called Velliketan in Malayalam, the coral snake which is again a venomous snake. 